hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday. And uh, if you're watching this on the replay, thank you for joining me and watching this replay. I'm gonna give a little bit of time here because I just went on right at the scheduled time that I'm supposed to. So I wanna give people a little bit of time to pop in if they wanna join. And um, we are going to create kind of an elaborate card today. The theme for this weekly challenge is pastels. And so the card we're going to create today is all beautiful pastel colors, a really pretty kind of rainbow of them. And I hope it will give you some inspiration for um, entering the challenge. And you can enter in Waffle Flowers Challenge at three uh, places. And even if you make one card, you can enter at each three of those places, which is Facebook, Instagram, and our website you can enter there there's a challenge blog and you can enter there as well and and on the website we have more information about entering so if you want to know how you do that you can enter hi thanks for joining me so um that's kind of the theme for today and we're making a birthday card because i seem to have never have enough of those <laughs> and this one's super cute and super sweet this is definitely one that my girls love which i'll hold up they are uh, eight and six. So this is what we're going to create today. This card was made with the We Heard uh, stamp set. That's an older set. It's illustrated by Liz Meitinger. It's just adorable. I love it. And that, but this does have some new products on it that our release was just yesterday. Ah, it already feels like a week ago. It's been such a crazy week, but it was just yesterday was our release. And two of uh, Two new products are on this card. One is the confetti stencil here. This is a two stencil that has four parts. So it's kind of like a layering stencil or a builder sort of stencil to build all this confetti, but there's also a matching die for that as well. And then there are, there the other product is this oversized smile um, st uh, stamp set and die, word die which I love these sets, these were giant, the oversized, we have a bunch of oversized um, words. We have like, hello, and thank you, and hugs, a bunch. And they are so great for filling up space, and I love that they're scripty, and they come with this, uh, a bunch of sub-sentiments that are nice and linear like that, so it's a really great set. Whew, and it is hot here in Arizona. <laughs> we are already in the 90s, so I'm probably going to look like a totally different person when they're done with this live because I'm gonna be sweating. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to my work surface here and we will get started. So it's gonna go black just for a second while I change the view of the camera. Let's see if I can figure out how to do this again. All right, there we go. And we'll change it down. Hi! And let me tighten it up just a bit so it doesn't fall down. Okay, there we go. All right, let's get everything kind of straightened out. Ooh, my work thing is not moving. Okay, so let's see if we can pull out. No, we cannot. All right, I have to pull the camera up, so it might be a little bouncy here, just so we can see better, more of my work surface. I guess I had it a little too low. Instagram and YouTube have kind of different require a different setup for my camera. Okay, all right, that's a little bit better. All right, so I already have my Misty out because we're gonna start right away by stamping our images. Let me pull that out of there. Okay, so there's my Misty, push that up. And let's start by quickly stamping um, some of the images from the We Heard stamp set. Hi from Georgia, hi Diane. So I am, this is the We Heard stamp set. Let me pull it out here. Ah, I got hats coming off. I love this set, I've used this a lot. And I'll have to share another card on Instagram that I made. Oh, I'm glad you're here watching. Oh, hi, hi from New Zealand, awesome. So here is the We Heard stamp set. What this set is awesome because you get not only all those cute little bunnies, which is what we're using today, also these sheep here. And aren't they cute? Sorry, it's kind of a double because it's off, but I love this set. And lots of balloons, and the sentiment's perfect. We heard it's your birthday. So cute. So I'm going to use all these bunnies and the 
these balloons. I think I stamped one of them twice. Where's my card? Okay, yeah. It's been a while since I made this guy. <laughs> All right, let's put this to the side. Grab my white cardstock. I dropped my misty magnet and it broke. So I have a, the other half somewhere else, but sad day. All right, we're gonna stamp this guy way up here. Maybe I'll do him upside down actually. Yeah, right up to the edge there. And then let's stamp some of these balloons. Okay, so I'm gonna Copic color these. Now luckily this is gonna go really fast because we're gonna color it in very light colors and uh, half of the bunnies are really not even get colored. They're gonna be black, so it's gonna go really fast. I love Copic coloring things in light colors because it just doesn't show your mistakes as much but I do not own enough light Copics and I'm not used to using such a light palette. How do you guys, do you guys typically go, if you're gonna do a rainbow, do you typically find yourself doing like bold, bright colors or kind of soft pastel colors? I almost always go for the bold, bright colors. I don't, I often don't even think about pastels for some reason. But spring definitely gets you starting to think about lightening up your palette a little bit for sure. Stamp it a couple times just to make it nice and bold and dark. I really love Momental Tuxedo Black because it um, dries super fast and it's good for Copic coloring, but it does take a couple stamps to get it nice and bold. Bright, but I love Pretty Pastel Rainbow. Yes, I do too. I'm just not, I love it. I just don't think about it sometimes. I don't know why. I get kind of like a, in a one track kind of mind. Oh, I've got to use this is my rainbow and these are the colors I use, you know? And something else I'm trying to do more, this is gonna be the last time I stamp it. Probably don't even need to do this one. I'm also trying to incorporate kind of more muted colors, which even again, I have a hard time doing just cause I'm not used to it and it's just a really different way to, to think about color palettes. And I mean like browns and, and um, sages and mustards, really kind of darker but softer colors. Gosh, does that make any sense, darker but softer colors? <laughs> hi, Heather, hi from New York. Okay, we're gonna stamp this weather balloon one more time. And then we'll, I promise we'll, we'll get into the nitty gritty or some of the action, the Copic coloring. have more bright colors. Yeah, that's what I invested in too, is like bright colors too. That's probably a good point too. Like what do I, what inks do I own? What markers do I own? Probably definitely more of the brights and bolds, which is why I use them more. Okay, stamped. Now it's time for us to color. So let's zoom on in here. All right, we can do that. Oh darn, I'm gonna be away from the camera. This is in and out, in and out. Okay, hold on a second, because if I can't stand in color, I don't have that skill. So I'm gonna move it down. So the camera's closer to the work and so I can see what you're saying. Oops, hi from Minnesota. Okay, aren't they cute? Oh my gosh, I love those little bunnies. Okay, so let me grab my Copics that I'm gonna use. I'm also gonna grab the card here so I can keep an eye on what I did. All right, so I'm gonna color then basically brown and white. So start here. And look at how like this is already dry and ready to start Copic coloring. I love that. That's why I kind of like the Memento Tuxedo Black a lot for when I um, do Copic coloring. And let me know if you can't hear me or anything. So right now I'm doing my base color which is E30. And after I've kind of colored the whole thing, which is my lighter shade, and then my darker shade is gonna be E31. <clears throat> and we're gonna go anywhere where it would be in shadow, kind of around his face. 
Now I'm definitely not trying to be like super accurate here. I'm gonna color some places that may, might not really be in shadow, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about contrast. I wanna get some contrast here, kind of, which contrast is like lights and darks next to each other. So um, it's just more visually in, interesting that way. Hello, Nina. Okay. And again, this, this, the card theme or this week's challenge at Waffle Flower is pastels. And this card would go with it perfectly. It's fun to make really soft and pretty cards. And this is gonna be a birthday card, but this could almost be a welcome baby card. Definitely pastels kind of fit that theme. And look at that bunny, now he's all done. Oh, he's so cute. And he doesn't have any inner part of his ears, so I'm not gonna color that. Now we're gonna move on to this bunny, and this bunny is white. Now white, I like to t deal with my whites simply with um, creating a shadow. Hello, Missy. And I like to do that with a really light blue, and this is BG10, and all I'm gonna do is kind of paint anywhere that would be, in, or color, <laughs> I'm not painting, haha, <laughs> anywhere in shadow with this blue. And that's all I'm gonna do. Basically, they leave most of it uncolored, essentially. And if anything's too harsh, I can, like, too, too much blue, it looks, has too much of a blue hue, I can soften it with um, my color, colorless blender. Here we are. Just soften it just a hair. And you could um, use gray too. Uh, I just sometimes think gray, um, I don't know. I like the, the bluish tone of the more than the gray. That's just my personal preference. All right, now I am gonna color this guy's ears with a really light pink R11. There's definitely people with better, I'm glad you found that helpful, but there's definitely people who do it, it a lot better. But this is my simple, way of coloring whites. And you can see, if I hold up here, it just has a slight shadow to it. And, and it looks like I colored it, you know? It doesn't look like I just left it alone, you know? It looks like I attempted to color it anyways. <laughs> that I did a color that rabbit. Okay, let's make our way through the rest of them. This guy is going to be brown and white. Yeah, it gives a little bit of depth. That's right, exactly. Just a small amount. Definitely more visible in person than it is on camera right now, but it's definitely worth it too. This is my darker shade. Just going around. There we go, real simple. And then we will add blend it, I guess, with my lighter shade. And sorry, I'm bouncing the table and stuff. I'm kind of like kneeling in my chair <laughs> and coloring this. So it's, I'm not, I'm oh, resting on my forearms a lot. So not the most elegant way to work. But that way I can see the comments and everything. Okay, there's our, and now our pink. We gotta get you out of there. You're confusing me. Hello, Olivia, thanks for joining us. We are coloring some bunnies. This was Easter weekend. Did everybody have a nice weekend, a holiday weekend? We um, had a, the Easter bunny come, so my daughters found eggs. Oh, you're hardly late, Emma, don't worry. You're hardly late, we just started. This is the first thing we're doing, which is coloring these images. Um, but we um, we were outside because I did see my family, but so we stayed outside the whole time. But in Arizona, it starts to get um, a little bit uncomfortable <laughs> this time of the year when you're outside. So we did kind of, we actually went into the pool. Oh, very busy weekend, I bet. This must be, is it busier than Christmas? I always thought Easter might be even busier than Christmas. 
Okay, we'll move on to this one. Yeah, but we went swimming in the pool. Well, okay. I did not go swimming in the pool. I put my legs in the pool. <laughs> What's the temp here? Let's see. Oh, it says I'm on YouTube. Um, it's about 90, I bet. Yep, pool weather already. Yep. Aren't they cute? And I'm hardly using any colors. I'm using o essentially only three colors to color all these. Four, if you count the pink, to color these bunnies. That's it, four markers. Thank you. Yeah, my husband got it for me. I said, I, I said, they make rainbow watch bands? You have to get me one of those. I'll have to show you my earrings too, and I'm went toward the end of the live live because I found somebody who makes rainbow earrings and of course I have those now as well. All right, let's go almost done here. Aren't they so cute? I love them. I love Liz, um, one of our illustrators for Waffle Flower, just I think draws the cutest little critter, she made a, she makes some hamster sets. And one of my favorite sets is the, um, yeah, just super quick coloring is the, it's called Gym Rat. And there are little hamsters in like workout clothes, like classic 80s, jazzercise, you know, what are those, those <laughs> leg warmers? So cute. But that, that's called uh, Gym Rat, and I love that set. But it has little hamsters, and Liz illustrated that as well. I just think she does a great job illustrating critters. All right, we're almost in here. Super quick coloring, yep. Just, I don't know. Sometimes when I started uh, stamping, I found coloring, I thought the idea of coloring images was, I found it really intimidating. And I, it took me a long time to um, even buy any Copics because I just thought I didn't want to do that. And now I really enjoy coloring, but I do, I, I enjoy very simple coloring like this. I may or may not have had leg warmers in every color. <laughs> well, I'm very jealous. I had some pink ones, but I only had one pair. Okay, that's pretty much it for the bunnies. Now we're gonna do the balloons. Now, like I said, I have a rainbow palette of pastels picked out, or a pastel rainbow. Oh, you don't think it looks simple? It is pretty simple. Oh, I think you saw, you guys have to see it. It's pretty simple coloring. Um, the For the balloons, we're gonna do a pink, orange, yellow, green, and blue, obviously but only two markers for each again. So let's start with the pink one. You could get really crazy too and color them, you know, all different. I almost was tempted to color the bunnies themselves in pastel rainbow colors, but um, the, the way that today's card worked out, it made more sense to color the balloons and everything else. Just some practice. I don't think I'm the best either, but there's people who are a lot better than me. But I do think it helps to get some practice. I hope this is my light and not my dark. Oh my, why is this? This this marker is juicy. Why are you so juicy? I might have to. That is a juicy marker. Well, we're getting a gradation. Okay, that looks all right. And let's move on to our next combo, which is orange. Sorry, I got thrown off by that super juicy Copic marker. <laughs> it was almost running everywhere. All right, I'm gonna start with my lighter shade here and color the whole balloon. And then I'll move on to my darker shade. And these markers look that I'm using now look a little different than some of them that I used earlier, just because these are the Copic Chow. This is kind of the student grade version of Copics. So they're a little cheaper. They are still refillable, but the barrel 
which is the part that holds the ink, holds less. So you, um, actually a fair amount of mine are needing refills. But you would probably, if you use your Copics a lot, like I do, even the, even the sketch, you're gonna need some refills on eventually. And then I just blended it out with my lightest shade. Now we'll move on to our yellow. And these are the sketch, the wider kind of um, ovally shaped ones are the sketch. Does anybody else own like sketch and chow Copic markers like I do? Because I started when I started, like I was saying before, it took me a long time to um, even buy them just because they were such a high price point and I just was convinced I didn't need them. But I needed them. <laughs> I love them. They were well worth the investment. But the chow are uh, cheaper. In fact, I found when I, when I first started, I found some sets where when you priced it out per marker, they were only like three dollars a marker. Yeah, on Corey, what's on sale? Yep, I hear ya. I also bought some um, Copics at um, Hobby Lobby one time. They were, I think, they were like reducing the variety of Copics that they carried. So they were selling only some of their Copic markers discounted, I think. Yep, here it is. I got them for two bucks. Sketch, can you believe that? That was a good find. Somebody I think shared it once on fa Facebook and I was like, what, where? Tell me where this is happening. I have to get some markers. All right, we are on our way to the last little balloon with our blues. Now these guys I gotta test out because they look super similar to me. So this is the one. And this is the zero. You'd think the zero is lighter. That's what it should be, right? Marginally, they're pretty close, but I think the zero, B zero is lighter. Lots of miles on the car, oh my goodness. Luckily here in Phoenix, that's where I live, we have several, so, but I only went to one because at that point I already had a fair amount in my collection, so, and what I found at one was, I, th I felt like enough. Start with light colors, that's an awesome suggestion, yes. Nina says to start with light colors, and I agree. Start with the pastel colors. <laughs> it fits perfectly with what we're doing. That's it. The pastels, you can kind of build up. The light colors, you can build up a little bit of the darkness. Um, but with if you buy darker markers, it's a lot more difficult. It's practically impossible to get them. <sighs> you could use a colorless blender to get them lighter, but it looks a little strange. Okay, so there are my balloons and my bunnies all colored. So we can cut those out real quick with the, oops, matching dies. Move things around here. Can we zoom back out? Which colors would be good to start? Toy, that's a great question. Well, I, I do think a lot of them, you, you could, I, when I was looking and trying to pick out my colors, because there is a bit of personal preference there, like what colors do you kind of like? But when I was first look, picking out my colors, I kind of went online and I just looked up like Copic charts that people colored in, because I kind of like to see what they look like. Um, like when regular people color them, not like the factory, you know, chart that shows what they look like. I kind of like to see. And um, who is that? Who's there's Sandy? Sandy Alnick is that her name? She has a, a a hex chart, a Copic hex chart, and um, that is you can. A lot of people have purchased it and colored it in, and you can see on their hex charts. Uh, what the colors look like and then I would go from there and kind of like because you'll they'll be side by side so you can kind of see side by side like oh what's this yes that's her name thank you Missy yeah she made a hex chart and that is a really really, really handy tool all right just aligning that in using a couple pieces of micro pore tape to hold that in place I think I did that good and there we 
we go. Even though this is a magnetic board, I don't trust it. <laughs> so I'm gonna tape everything to make sure it doesn't slide around in, in, when I die cut it. Cause that makes me so angry. I've seen some people who will actually stamp, die cut, and then Copic color. That way they're not Copic coloring and then die cutting um, and then it getting messed up. They're only Copic coloring uh, images that die cut perfectly. But I'm not in the habit of doing that, obviously. But that's a good trick too. All right, let's pull these out. Ooh. Sticky, sticky. It does stick though, that micro pore tape a bit. So you gotta be careful about how you take it off. There we go. Definitely could use washi tape and other tape, but this is just what I have on my desk ready to go. Get off me. All right. We have one more balloon to go. And then we can start doing the background. And that's the new product, the new um, confetti stencils. Let's pull these, put everything aside so it's nice and safe. Did you cut out? Yeah. Look at those bunnies. And we have one more little um, balloon to cut out. Let me put these away so I don't lose anything. There we go. All right, so let me run that through and then we'll be ready to move on to the background. All righty. Okay, so now everything is, all our images are colored and die cut out. And that's kind of the most time consuming step. So there's all our little cute little bunnies and balloons. Now we're gonna move on to creating the background. And the background has that fun, colorful or pastel -y confetti. And we used to, I used a stencil for that. And this is a new product that came out. These are the stencils. You can see confetti stencil. I guess it's a little hard to read. There you go. And they are basically one stencil has two parts of it and you would ink blend them different colors. Now I'm going to kind of tweak this a little bit so I, cause there's essentially only four colors you need to do these, but I want to incorporate all five um, colors here that I did for the balloons. So I'm gonna tweak, actually do one half like twice. But you can see they're labeled and they have blue, green. There you go. No additional taping on stencils. Yes, that's a handy. And pink and yellow. So we'll start here. I think I basically follow these, the guide on here, um, all the way up until I get to that fifth color. So I'm just gonna place, actually let me grab my, um, so I don't get ink everywhere, my water media mat, place that down. Keep my ink on the mat and not everywhere else. Ooh, camera didn't like that. Let's see, can we zoom out again? No, all right, let's lift this up. I don't have to sit down anymore. My mat, my poor mat's so dirty, I need to clean it. <laughs> All right, that's a bit better. All right, let's get going. So we're gonna start with Spun Sugar Distress Oxide. Distress Oxides blend really well. Move the light over, it looks dark. Oh, that's much better, okay. And you don't have to like you know, there's not really like a right or wrong way. Just kind of place it down. These up here have like little half kind of cut off ones. So maybe you want to get those off of your page a little bit. But just don't, there's not, you don't have to worry too much about it. I am going to tape this down just so I don't have to hold it. So um, 
like with a vice grip. Yes, and Distress Oxides do not stain the mat, which is awesome. Okay, ink this up. My mat's just dirty because I just am bad and haven't cleaned it. <laughs> All the, it's just, it's like literally dust right now, just on the, so I just need to wash it off. So really quickly ink blending all of the little openings. You could definitely, I'm using um, a foam blending tool, mini foam blending tool. You could use brushes if you prefer. Both work beautifully. I like the blending tools because I like keeping, um, I like being able to switch out the foam pads because I like to keep the foam pads, each little mini foam pad for a specific ink color. So I really like to get the true color of the ink and not any kind of mixture of like the new color I'm using and the residual ink left on the pad. Okay, so that's it. Whoop. Super easy, there we go. Some confetti there. I'll turn this around. Now there are, I can't even see, See, there is a guide here, like scored lines, and you can line them up. You don't have to. But I always use this. You could just can find a like piece of confetti. I this squid squizzy squizzy. <laughs> this swirly squiggly um, piece of confetti is my kind of guide. I usually use that one. It's this spot right here. So that's pretty much if I'm trying to line them up perfectly so they don't overlap. It doesn't matter to me if they overlap, but that might matter to you. So you wanna use those that guide that's at, like imprinted or cut into the stencil to help you so that when you are positioning, you don't position it in a way where they overlap. But that's the one that I, I can see really easily. So this one's supposed to be yellow, etched. Okay, thank you, etched. It's like, what's, I know it's not cut because it's not all the way through. <laughs> That's the right word. This is um, dried marigold. So the first color I used was spun sugar. Now we're on dried marigold. This is a really pretty color. All these colors make me think of rainbow sherbet. That was my favorite ice cream as a kid. Do you remember what your favorite ice cream was? Or maybe it still is. That and bubblegum ice cream, but everybody knows that bubblegum ice cream is terrible, <laughs> it, but you love it when you're a kid, but it is actually very terrible ice cream because those bubble gums are hard. And what are you gonna chew your gum while you're eating ice cream? <laughs> I don't know. But it was definitely as a kid, like you had to get it. It just sounded so cool. All right, we're gonna go green. There's my little squiggle right there. Line it up. Again, you don't have to. This just prevents overlapping of the confetti. Oops. So this is supposed to be my green layer. I'm just gonna do, just go and do them in rainbow order now. Which is yellow. Now we'll get, a, we're gonna get some overlapping because I'm throwing a curveball here to this design and adding a fifth color. So I'm gonna do one section of stencil twice one half the stencil there's that goes really fast this was squeeze lemonade I don't know if I have a favorite ice cream nowadays maybe coffee maybe I don't know I definitely like anything with chocolate and peanut butter cookies and cream oh yeah that my sister loves cookies and cream too I do like cookie dough. I like that one too. Now we're doing our green. This green is so pretty. This one, I'm sorry, I should keep them on screen. I'm not used to that. This is cracked pistachio. I love this color. Our gate's open, so that if you hear a loud sound, it's blowing open and shut in the wind. <laughs> being noisy. Salted caramel. That sounds really good. That sounds really good. Oh, 
Alrighty. So there's that one. And you can see how it's growing. Look at how pretty it's looking. I love these stencils. And that's where I could stop there, but because I'm 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 breaking the rules, because I'm a rule breaker, I'm going to throw in another color. But I am gonna to have to stop and clean my stencils because right now they are a little dirty with that residual ink still on them. So I'll show you my favorite way to clean stencils. Hokey pokey ice cream. I've never heard, yeah, that might be a New Zealand flavor. I've never heard of that. Oh, what you have to describe, tell us what hokey pokey ice cream is like. Oh, this is exciting. One time we went to like our local, um, uh, like our Asian supermarket and we got cor corn and cheese ice cream because <laughs> my husband and, and I like to try strange foods and that was actually really good. <laughs> corn and cheese. It was really good actually. Till, till, uh, till hook. Yes, those are really good ice cream, good quality ice creams. I we don't get it very often because um, I'm not my husband. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you guys so mad at me, but I'm not a huge ice cream isn't my favorite treat. Um, my husband likes it more than me. So and he doesn't do any of the grocery shopping. I do it all. <laughs> so poor guy never gets any ice cream. All right, so I just have to pick a half. I think we'll just use. It doesn't really matter. I just kind of move it around into a spot where I'm not overlapping a lot of colors, a lot of previous ink blended. You can even flip it over so you're using the back side so it doesn't look um, repetitive. It looks a little bit more broken up. Great cheese. Oh yeah, cheese. So it stands to reason, yes. I, I mean, I agree, that sounds like sound reasoning to me. They do make great cheese. All right, we're gonna go with that. So I'm using the backside of the yellow. All right. And our last color is our blue, which is tumbled glass. And I got too into the t ice cream talk and I realized now I did not explain why I, why I clean my stencils the way I do. So when I clean this one, I'll try to explain that a little bit better. If you've ever worked with stencils before, you may have noticed after you clean them that the, some of the dirty water goes from the front to the back side a little bit. So that's why I use a towel because the towel kind of prevents that from happening. So I don't clean my stencil the front and then I accidentally get some of that dirty ink water on the front. So it's just a, it's the best way I found to clean. And I can dry it real quick too, right back to back. Okay, so that's our finished rainbow pastel confetti. Now, if you look at the original card, let me grab it. You can see it goes pretty far. So that's because I did it a second time. So we're gonna do that real quick here. I promise I'll be fast. Just kind of line it up. And all I'm looking for when I'm lining it up is that it kind of fills in the space nicely. And starting with our pink again, which is sponge sugar. Yes, it's very festive. It has a very, I think, cute um, birthday feel. Definitely would be appropriate for like a kid birthday. My daughters like to have themed birthdays, but not, <laughs> not themed what they come up with is, I'm always like, oh, okay. You know, not like princess theme, even though we've had a couple princess themed birthdays, but it's not always quite so obvious like that. I think 
My eight-year-old is now talking about having a whale birthday. Of course, this will definitely, her birthday's in October, so that will change <laughs> for sure. There's no, I highly doubt we'll still be wanting a whale birthday by then, but, but our last birthday was a hamster birthday. They like to come up with silly things. So I could line up again with my squiggle that I'm using as a key or a guide. That's just a, it's a good guide to use if you just don't wanna prevent overlapping of your confetti. And if the, your confetti overlaps too much, you're gonna get more, you're gonna lose some of all your clean colors. Some party photos, oh my gosh. I don't even know what we, I don't think we did anything really. She got a hamster. So that was the big, that was the big surprise or the big thing about that birthday. She got a hamster for her birthday. His name is Bubbles. He's bit us once, so he doesn't get held as much as we, as he should be, because we're a little scared. <laughs> but he's still really fun. He's really fun to kind of watch, and he comes up and says hi, kind of from his cage when you go into the room. So... He's been fun. Besides bubbles, we have two. Yes, yeah, so we have two cats and a hamster now. That's exactly what I was gonna say, two cats and a hamster. <laughs> well, my cats could care less about the hamster. My cats are like the most domesticated, non-wild cats whatsoever. They're, they have no wild instincts anymore. <laughs> There's this, um, now I'm gonna sound like a total weirdo. But there is this, I don't know, like, how do you describe it? Like a rumor or a pl prank that if you place a cucumber or a zucchini near a cat, the cat kind of freaks out. And we tried that on my cats, and no, they won't. Hokey pokey candy by melting white sugar and golden syrup together and then adding a teaspoon. Oh, no, it was soda, baking soda. Oh, I didn't get to read it all. How do I? Oh, there we go. It all froths up into golden delicious and you can break it. Oh, so it sounds kind of like, like a, a hot, not like ice cream, but, oh, but that's in the ice cream. I got it. I got it. So it's like kind of like a hard candy sort of, oh my gosh, I would love to try that. That's so cool. Thank you for, for teaching me or explaining it. I know it's probably like, how do I explain this? <laughs> That's really interesting. I'd love to try that. But anyways, I was saying before, my cats were not scared at all by the cucumber. That did not phase them one little bit. They kept sleeping or kept eating. Whatever they were doing before, they didn't care about the cucumber. Did I just blend two oranges? OMG, I blended two oranges. <sighs> this is why I can't, I can't do two things. I can't talk <laughs> and craft at the same time. Well, this one bottom half will have a lot of orange. That's all right, though. I don't think anybody, only, only you guys who have watched this will actually know that. Rats. I have to do two twice now because I messed up. Just go over with non-competing color. Okay. Oh, I could, couldn't I? Oh, let's hopefully we'll do this. Too bad I, I probably could have gone over sponge sugar and it would have been maybe okay. That's all right though. I think it'll be fine. The, the sentiment goes kind of right there, so. It'll cover it up. What half are you? Pink, okay, you're done. Now we're gonna do this one. We're gonna do it actually green, <laughs> not orange again. You do have to be mindful of this edge here and try to keep, I could tape it off and mask it off, but I need to be mindful not to go too um, wild with my ink blending and blend off of there. I think I might've done it a little bit already. If I just masked it, I could just put a piece of tape on top there. I could avoid it. 
completely and not worry about it at all. There you go. I think it's looking okay. And now we just have blue. Just got extra orangey down there. All right. No, no, that's not true. To definitely not your fault. I'm very good at making my own mistakes. I don't need any help. I'm very good at it all by myself. <laughs> okay, we'll do that there. Grab my tape again, and then this is our last color. Woohoo! I, I can barely do anything. I can't do many two things at the same time, that's for sure. Okay. Yes, there's four layers on the stencil. Sorry, I missed that comment. I'm so glad Nina's here because I can't see y'all. I missed some of them. Yeah, you could don't. Uh, I yeah, you shouldn't. I hope you don't stress about getting it stained. The oxides were are are safe, so you don't have to worry about those. Um, I have a mat that's totally stained. Um, I only I, I try to keep this one clean because um, it's just prettier to look at it for you guys to look at an unstained mat. But um, I, I try not to stress about it either. I hope you guys don't stress about it too much either because a stained mat still works just as good as a non-stained one. It's just cosmetic stuff. And it shows that you, you used it, you know? It's been loved, it's been useful. Okay, so that guy's all done. No one will ever know that I did that orange twice. Let me move this out of the way. And let's kind of put it together. We're basically there on home search. We have one last thing to do is kind of finish up our sentiment. Yes, pinks, reds, and don't forget about um, purples would kind of fall in that category. And some blues, like a cobalt blue, have often have like a pink in there. So um, watch out for those too. Okay, so there's that. Where's my other one? Oh, here they are. So there's all my little pieces. And, okay, so we used, so the sentiment, let me get, I gotta clean, clear some space. Oh, and I wanted to show you one thing real quick that there are, um, there is, I should say, a dye that corresponds or coordinates with um, that confetti stencil. This is the dye here. I think this is really cool. For one, it would be great to cut out like this confetti and put it in a shaker card to fill it up with that. Or, um, the other thing I think would be great, I think somebody did a sample of this, is um, they die cut their panel. They did the, 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 the blending with the, the stencils, but then they die cut their panel and then lift their panel up and it just had a neat effect, like the die cut confetti against or near the ink blended confetti. I don't know, had a neat depth to it. Sorry, I know I'm doing a horrible job explaining that, but. You can go on uh, online and see our, our samples. I thought that was a really good way to use that dye. Okay, so if our sentiment, I'm using the oversized uh, smile stamp set and word dye. This is the combo, so you get the stamp set and the word dye included. Um, like I was saying before, it's awesome, great big uh, scripty sentiment with a bunch of these nice and linear sub sentiments. I love that combo. It's just, I think it's gorgeous. She would get some of these stars and I used just this stamp set pretty much for a card. I love it. But I went ahead and used the die to die cut um, three, let me pull the die out so you can look at it. Three smiles out of white cardstock and then a shadow layer, which is cut with this die here. Ah, get off, out of vellum. And sorry, I just threw them here so they're all over the place. We're going to stack these up to get a, to create a dim dimensional sentiment. So I'm going to grab my three smiles. 
You could definitely use foam, adhesive. Do you have a mini? Oh yeah, I have a mini one too. The mini is super handy for like pulling out. I'll show you the mini real quick if you haven't seen it. This is the mini water mini mat. It is super handy to kind of, I think someone was talking about not have maybe not having enough workspace sometimes. That's why I love the mini one. Um, I pull it out and um, when I'm in the middle of a project and just pop it down, do whatever ink, usually it's ink blending, whatever ink blending I need to do, my panel will fit in here. This, this is an A2 panel. That's what an A2 panel looks like inside there. Also, um, real a big teaser here, you can use this for, um, uh, what's the word, mirror stamping with your MISTI. You can mirror stamp on this too, but um, there, I kind of have a hack for this, and mine's a little dirty, but I have a hack for this for mirror stamping, using this as a surface to create a mirror impression on and then transfer that mirrored impression onto a piece of cardstock. And there is a video on Waffle Flowers YouTube channel showing you how to use the mini media mat in your MISTI for mirrored stamping. Super handy tool. All right. Let's put this together. I'm gonna tr attempt to sit down and do this. Okay, I can still see. So I've got some glue. I'm gonna stack two of the smiles on top of each other. First, two of the white ones. So we're creating a dimensional sentiment, but we're also going to add that vellum. And when we lift vellum, vellum up away from your paper, your card front, it gets more opaque. So that's a great kind of way to get that vellum a little bit less transparent and, and creates a better, um, I don't know, way to separate kind of your sentiment or draw eye, your eye to the sentiment and away from the busy background. Okay, so now we're ready for the vellum. Now that we've got two stacked up. I will often use, even though I made it really pretty for you guys, but I will often use scrap cardstock, card pa panels that didn't work out or I didn't, maybe I didn't like how ink blended or something. And I'll use that for these dimensional layers because essentially you won't even see them. They're gonna be covered up by the top layer. So only, only one needs to be pretty. You might see a little bit of color from the side, but it's just a great way to be a little bit more green. And I know, I have a feeling that most of you guys are like me, you save your, your scraps because those are handy to have. There we go. So I just adhered the vellum right on top. Do you have a favorite vellum? Um, gosh, I don't have a favorite vellum, not really. Whatever, whatever you can get. I like it a little thicker, but I, I, I don't want it too thick where I can't, I can, you know, cause kind of the point of vellum is so you can, you can see, you know, what's under or behind a little bit. Too thick sometimes makes it too, is just too opaque. All right. Yes, you do. Isn't it great? Okay, so I added glue to the back side. I'm gonna stick it down. I love the smile. It's very balanced. Smile's a very balanced word or um, this scripty um, style of it is just very balanced. We've got a lot of nice places, a lot of lower. Okay, this is gonna show you how crazy I am. A lot of lower loops here, which are great for placing your sub sentiment on because they don't affect your ability to read the um, sentiment, but they allow that little bit of, kind of like that little bit of peekaboo of the sentiment down below. I love that. I love how you can layer your sentiment on top, but not, but it still be legible. Gosh, I know that was not explained the best way, but I hope it made some sense. Now we'll add our dot for our eye. And that is done. I'm not even gonna worry about stacking back here. 
doesn't no that eye doesn't need support it's all right okay so that's pretty much done i did already stamp and white heat emboss the sub sentiment i do have to trim it a little bit and i'm using some really light pink cardstock okay all right let's pull this together and here's our panel so now we have everything we're ready to go let me grab my card base first thing i'm going to do is score yeah it's a handy 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 trick I, I should have put the vellum down i wonder if i have my vellum here oh i do so vellum if you put it right down on it see how you almost can't even see it like yeah it's a little bit shadowy but straight directly on to the 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 patterned cardstock or our confetti it's gets kind of lost but when you lift it up a little bit with and we did that by stacking cardstock it makes it a little bit more let's see if i can do this see that's a little bit more opaque and it actually does what it, i'm intending it to do which is create like a buffer so that the sentiment pops away from the busy background All right, let's finish this up. Grab my card base. This looks big. <laughs> what size are you, card base? You don't look right. Yeah, you're okay. I got some like Recollections cardstock, which if, if you're familiar is the Michaels brand. It's a it's nice heavyweight, not great for coloring on or ink blending on but great for your card bases but it's a little wonky <laughs> like it has a little bit of extra here and when I cut it in half it's not a perfect what is it eight and a half by eleven so when I cut it in half at four and a quarter to create two top folding card bases one card base is bigger than the other <laughs> so I've been I I don't always have that problem but this batch I do that's gonna be fine I'll just trim that off later. Oh, good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Good, good. All right. I'm going to adhere this down with um, my tape runner. Since this is a light, this is also Recollections, a lightweight, I think it's only 65 pound cardstock. I'm not going to use liquid glue, which is my favorite way, favorite adhesive. I'm going to use a tape runner. It just, um, liquid glue with thin weight cardstock, you get, you're much more likely to get bubbling and warping. So, that's why I'm moving to my tape runner for this. And I might have to stand up to do this. It's difficult to get things centered when you're seated. That's a Kathy Zolski trick, and it's definitely a good one. She's a genius. All right, that goes on here. So now I can use liquid glue. That's all I adhered now to a heavyweight. So I'm gonna go back to my liquid glue. The reason why I like liquid glue is it just gives me that little bit of uh, wiggle room, a little bit of time to adjust it and get it straight. I feel like with a tape, I have one go. <laughs> liquid glue gives me a little chance to kind of correct it. All right, that's good. So now we have that down. We'll do our bunnies. I had a problem with Michael's cardstock too. Yeah, that it's not it's cheap, so kind of, you know, not always perfect. But like I said, I really like it for card bases for the most part because it's good for that. It's nice heavy weight. But you might have to do some tweaking. Like I'm gonna have to cut off this edge here because that bothers me a little bit. But that's really minor. All right, let's glue these guys down. Did, is that what I did? I didn't do any foam? Okay. I'm looking at my original card trying to see what I did. Just add some liquid glue to the back of these guys. Put them just above the, the um, stitched edge on this panel. Now we'll do our, let's go ahead and do our sentiment. And we'll do our balloons around it. But we are on home stretch. 
It would be fun with that glit with this um with the confetti stencils. I didn't do it on this card and I wish I kind of had, but to have added um to done some of the uh the the gosh, where are my words? To done some of the confetti with a glitter paste. Wouldn't that be pretty? You could do each layer in glitter, like different colored glitter paste, and then you'd have this glittery. <gasps> and because the, the stencil is designed so they don't overlap, you don't have to worry about like, you don't have to worry about that thickness problem of overlapping glitter paste twice or anything like that. Wouldn't that be cool? I gotta do that, huh? Get off the bee. All right. Let's see. Get to about there. Push it down. I guess we can zoom in a smidge. And now finish up with the balloons. Hope we're going a little bit over an hour. Sorry guys. I hope that it's not too much eating into your day. But we are really almost done. We're gonna be like just 10 minutes past four. And you could even draw blue strings on these balloons. I didn't because I was thinking like confetti um, and balloons being released. But they would be cute with little strings drawn down to the bunnies. Okay. I'm gonna grab my top plate here. Just hold it down for a second just to let that kind of set up for a second. All right, and then we just have our sentiment and I don't have to worry really about um, lifting this up or any support for this because it's gonna rest again, like I point out before, nicely right on those hoops on the smile. See, look at that. Oh my gosh, those bunnies could not be cuter. Okay, we're gonna, oh my noisy gate. Put a little bit of glue there on the hoops. Stick it down. Stand up to make sure it's straight. <laughs> you really can't tell when you're seated. Okay, that looks it. That's it. It's done. How cute is that? And look at that beautiful confetti background. Again, wouldn't it be cool if we did that, if I had done it with like glittery paste? I have to do that now. They, they're awesome. They're, the stencils are awesome. There's just could be a billion things to use it for. And I love, 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 love. I've, every oversized set that Waffle Flower has is amazing. The smile one is a awesome addition to the oversized um, sentiment sets. The oversized, again, this is oversized smile. But we have a ton of oversized hello, oversized thank you, hugs. We have a bunch. And then, of course, the images are super cute. Wink Estella, that's a great idea. Ooh, maybe I'll go over and add it. Ooh. I have to be careful, though, not to go beyond it. But, of course, these cute little guys uh, and the balloons are all from the We Heard stamp set. So lots of fun. Okay, I'm gonna turn the camera back to me and we'll wrap this up. It's just gonna go black just for a second, so hang tight. Oop, believe I can do it. Oh, un untwist that. Okay. There we go, <laughs> okay. It's like every time I have to relearn how to do it, it's terrible. All right, there we go, pull it down to my face. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed creating our super cute birthday cards with the pastel palette. Remember, we have that challenge, so um, definitely encourage you guys to check out that challenge that we're doing right now for Waffle Flower. There are uh, three, four gift certificates give, we're giving away for um, randomly picked people. Also, um, the team picks out a winner too, so it's a really, really fun challenge. And this week again is pastels. So definitely check out. Yes, these are my rainbow earrings. See, they're made out of polymer clay. I did not make them. The artist who made them is named Shay 
made. But yeah, that's my new my my new thing I'm really excited about is <laughs> polymer clay earrings. I hope you guys um, enjoyed creating that card with me with me, and um, I really enjoyed talking with you. And I will see you guys uh, Friday. If you join us on IG, we do a live on there on Friday as well. And we're going to be creating a couple of cards with some new panel dies that came out in Waffle Flowers release, which I'm really excited about. So I hope I see you guys there on Friday. And it will also be at 3 Pacific time. It's 3 Arizona time for sure. Um, but we'll let, I hope I'll see you guys then. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. Bye, everyone.